found a new cell particle and we named it a vault. We wrote up our results and we sent in a manuscript for publication in one of the top science journals in the world. I rapidly got an education in publication politics. Hi, I'm Lenny Rome, the vault guy. I'm a cell biologist and a nanotechnologist. My passion is a common particle of the human cell called a vault. My goal is to explain what vaults are to non-scientists. Here's a picture of vaults to remind you what they look like. In my last video, I told you about the discovery of vaults and how they were named. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link below. Today, I want to go in a little different direction and cover three things that are tangential to actual science, but necessary if you want to publish your research results. First, we'll discuss the process of selecting a journal for your manuscript. Second, I'll say a few words about the manuscript review process and how our experience was certainly not routine. And finally, I'll address the politics of getting a new finding featured on the cover of a journal. When you have some original research that you want to get published, you start by writing up your data in a manuscript that describes your results to fellow scientists. Before your work is published, it's referred to as a manuscript. Once it's published, it's referred to as a research paper. It's not often that you can write about the discovery of a new cell component. So once the manuscript was written, my postdoc Nancy and I were really excited about trying to get the work published in one of the top journals in the world. We decided to send the paper to the journal Cell. At the time, Cell was one of the top three journals publishing cell biology research, the others being Science and Nature. You know, I had a pretty good understanding of the publication process. You send in a manuscript to a journal, and if it's potentially of interest to the readers of that journal, the editor of the journal sends it out to other scientists, and sometimes they're members of the editorial board. These scientists, who are always anonymous, evaluate the manuscript, send their reviews and their opinion about the suitability of the manuscript for publication back to the journal editor. Cell was a relatively new journal founded in 1974 by Benjamin Lewin, a molecular biologist. Lewin had a tough reputation, and I had heard from some of my colleagues that he was East Coast-centric in his favoritism for authors and institutions. One week after mailing in the article, remember the internet hadn't been discovered yet, we received a letter from Lewin stating that he had read the manuscript, found it interesting, but he decided not to send it out for review, as we had not yet elucidated the function of this new particle. Here's what Lewin wrote. Once you determine the function of this particle, I will be happy to publish it in cell. We were crushed. Hmm. Nancy and I thought that this was a very unfair decision. Considering that most particles in the cell had required dozens, if not hundreds of years of work to elucidate their function. I certainly wasn't confident or savvy enough at the time to pick up the phone and tell the editor of Cell that he was making a mistake. But thinking back, it was probably something I should have done. Of course, hindsight is always 2020. Well, Putting aside the publication politics that were likely involved, we decided instead to mail the manuscript to the Journal of Cell Biology, JCB. JCB is a highly regarded international journal. At that time, the editor-in-chief of the journal was Dr. Norton Galula, an accomplished cell biologist who studied cell junctions. Galula immediately sent the manuscript out for review and we waited. About two weeks later, I was sitting in my office, and my phone rang. What follows is a reenactment of that call. I remember it like it was yesterday. Hello? Hello, is this Dr. Rome? Yes. Can I help you? Dr. Rome, please 
forgive me for calling you directly. My name is Joan Stites. I've never done this before, but I was assigned as an anonymous reviewer on the manuscript you submitted to the Journal of Cell Biology. I wonder if I could have a minute to talk to you about it? It's not every day that someone discovers a new cell particle. For a moment, I was frozen, nervous, and excited all at the same time. My blood pressure went through the roof. This just doesn't happen in science. First, the manuscript review process is supposed to be completely anonymous. Experts in the field are asked to review the manuscript by a journal editor, and they reply back to the editor. The editor then decides whether to publish or not. Second, it was Joan Stites on the phone. Joan Stites, the famous cell biologist who discovered novel RNAs involved in gene splicing. My God, her work set the field ahead by light years. Joan Stites was calling me. I calmed down enough to take the call. You know, Joan was extremely nice to me over the phone. She explained to me that when someone sends in a manuscript that describes something entirely new that might be common in all cells, such a manuscript is held to a higher standard. She felt there were a few specific things we needed to do that would make the paper much stronger, and she was asking me if we could do those things. As one of the leading RNA experts in the world, Joan was most concerned about the vault RNA, which she requested we characterize a little further. This call was for me and Nancy a highly unusual and exciting event, as it was the first acknowledgement we had gotten from a critical, influential scientist that maybe vaults were interesting and maybe they were important. Experiments were carried out quickly by Nancy and the revised manuscript was sent back to the journal. There was one other sticking point that one of the reviewers had concerning the issue of why was this particle not observed before? You know, it turns out to be a common question from any cell biologist who first learns about vaults. Why these are big, abundant particles? Why hasn't anyone described them before? We explained that other small abundant particles like ribosomes were easily recognized because in typical EMs, they attracted stain and they looked like very dark granules. In addition, they were often aligned along ER membranes that made them easier to recognize. Vaults, on the other hand, are mostly protein particles with only a small amount of RNA, and therefore they do not attract stain. And in the cell section, they would just look like gray blobs, which typically are seen throughout the cell cytoplasm kind of like background noise. This strategy must have worked, as the objection was quickly dropped and the paper was accepted for publication. You know, one final issue was whether a picture of the vault would be put on the cover of the journal. We mocked up a journal cover with a negative stain image of vaults, and I sent in the picture to be considered for the cover. And we were told by editor Galula that there were several other pictures under consideration for the cover that month. Here's what our proposed cover looked like. My first experience with journal covers was when I was a postdoctoral fellow at the NIH and one of our manuscripts was selected for publication. And we learned that the journal had selected one of our figures from the paper to be featured on the cover of the journal. It was a skin cell, a fibroblast, stained to reveal the location of a lysosomal enzyme examined under the EM. I was very excited to share this news with my wife, Melanie, and she told her mom, Sandy. Well, Sandy started telling all of her friends out on the tennis court that her son-in-law was going to have his picture on the cover of a major scientific magazine. When the journal came out, I brought Sandy over a copy featuring our research on the cover. I thought you said your picture was going to be on the cover, she said, disappointment in her voice. Why, it is my picture. I grew the cells, I stained them, I prepared them for the EM, I replied. Sandy was crushed. This was now the second time that she was disappointed by me. The first being after Melanie and I got engaged. 
Then Sandy went out to tell all her friends that Melanie was marrying a doctor, only to later learn that I was a PhD and not a real doctor. So we waited for the journal to be published, and we were quite disappointed when we discovered that vaults were not selected to be on the cover. Instead, there was a nondescript looking immunofluorescent image of a membrane structure called a tight junction on the cover. It was from a different article in that month's issue from a group out of Harvard and Yale. I have no idea why this image was selected over the one we submitted. Perhaps their paper was more exciting or thought to be more important. Perhaps they were friends with the editor as both groups had worked on cell junctions. Of course, the cover could have been selected for any number of other reasons. The one thing I believe, though, is that the picture itself was not more interesting than the picture of vaults. Decide for yourself. They say the reason academia is so cutthroat is because the stakes are so low. I'm Lenny Rome, the Vault Guy. Join me in the next video where I describe our attempt to get vault research funded by the federal government. You might be surprised how the process works and how vaults were scored by the largest funder of biomedical research in the world.